Hey guys, welcome to today's video. So what we're going to be doing today is making Ragnarok's Blue Obelisk from Ark Survival Evolved. Ark is one of my most played games. It's what you can see in the background here. So for me, this was so much fun to make and I hope you guys enjoy the process. Let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is take a piece of plywood. So we're going to use that as the base and then we're going to take some XPS foam and we're going to cut it out to the same size as the plywood. There we go, fits great, that's perfect. And now I'm going to draw around this pizza dish thing so that I can get the nice circle that I want. And I'm just going to add a couple of little bits where I want a bit more detail on the edge. So I'm just going to mark that out in pencil and then we're going to take a wire cutter and cut the whole thing out and just see how it goes. This is my first time doing anything with a wire cutter, so it was a little nerve wracking, but it's quite exciting at the same time. I'm quite happy with that, that looks all right. And it fits perfect. We're good to go. I've got this old tin that I want to use the lid for, for like the center obelisk section. So I'm just gonna draw a circle around that. I wanna know where the middle is because I'm gonna need a few circles inside and outside this circle for extra details. I'm gonna cut out a couple of extra circles on some thinner XPS foam and lay them onto the center. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna need to get my little tin lid again and get myself that extra center bit, which is gonna be the center console. More circles for the center bit because there's a lot of detail in this center bit. So I need to make sure I get it quite accurate if I can. And now I've got to cut out a bit on the bottom of the foam where I want the wiring to go through because I do want this to light up. So I'm just cutting out a section that I can fit the battery into. Now I'm going to use a different type of hot wire cutter to cut out a big chunk of the center so that everything can fit through nice, you know? And then a couple holes into the center of my other circles, make sure we can get that wire coming through. And now I'm just going to use my hot wire cutter to add some grooves and holes where I might want to thread the wires. Oh, this was a pain in the backside, so I had to get my Dremel out and make a line where the wires would run through on the plywood. And I'm telling you now that took so much longer than it should have. But finally, we're ready to use PVA glue, spread it all around the base, loads of it, and then flip it over and we can stick it down to our plywood. If I don't stop getting my head in the way, you might be able to see what I was doing. Now, another fun new thing for me, Plaster of Paris, I want to make some rocks. So I'm going to use Plaster of Paris and I'm going to crunch up some foil and make some like little templates. I've seen people do this and it seemed to turn out well, so hopefully it will. Just mix the Plaster of Paris with some water and I'm going to pour it into these and then leave them to dry. And hopefully we get a good result. We'll have a look a bit later on. I'm going to glue now all the other bits of foam together. Uh, just cut out some more details on the edge where I want them. Now I'm going to take a bit of a different type of XPS foam. This is an old bit of foam that I've had in for ages, but I want some details around the outside of this. I'm going to cut that out again with a hot wire cutter, and then we'll try to assemble it in the right way. Seems to be all right. Then we just got to cut them so that they've got kind of the details that I want. Glue them all together. I'm using hot glue for this. It's not ideal for XPS foam, but it did the job. Because it kind of burns it sometimes. And then we can just cut that to how we want it. Put it onto the main base and yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Make sure that I can get a chopstick all the way through the middle. And yeah, it's worked out pretty good. So now we can glue that down. Again, getting in the screen so you can't see what I'm doing. So off screen, I made these blocks out of some XPS foam so that they can look like the standing stones that are around the outside of the obelisk. So our rocks have come out quite well. So we're going to smash them up and glue them in place. Oh, if I can keep hold of the thing. Just going to keep gluing them around here until I think it looks pretty good. And I'm going to do the same with the rest of the diorama. So now we need to fill in all the gaps. So we're going to use some Mod Podge with some Plaster of Paris, mix it together and smooth it out through all of the gaps and just make everything tie in a bit nicer together. This has come out a little bit stodgy. I mean, look at the state of my hands after this. So I'm going to go for some PVA glue instead of Mod Podge and a little bit less Plaster Paris and wear some gloves this time. And it's come out so much smoother. So I'm going to use this in the future. Maybe I used too much Mod Podge last time. I don't know. This is all quite new to me. I've made dioramas in the past, but nothing quite this intense. So I'm covering the whole thing in it. I've gone on to use a glue spatula for some of it. And then to soften it all, I'm putting a bit of water on my finger and then just smoothing out all the areas that I think need it. And this is how it looks. Not too bad. It looks a bit like a cake. You kind of want to eat it, don't you? So it's actually ready now to be primed. So what I'm going to do is use some Mod Podge and some black acrylic paint. This is just cheap paint from Home Bargains, but it seems to do the job. I, I'm really fond of it. So I'm just going to put this paint and Mod Podge mix all over the whole diorama. And that's the base finished. On to the next step. 
Right, so I need to make like a mesh sort of looking thing for the middle bit of the diorama. So I'm just going to use this gloss varnish and I'm going to use that as a primer because in tests in the past I found that as a good primer for using on EVA foam, which is what I'm using it on here. It's just a really thin piece of EVA foam. And I've got this like plastic mesh that I'm just going to put over it once the varnish is dry, of course. And this is my first time using an airbrush, but I'm going to use a grey and I'm going to airbrush over the whole thing with this grey and just see how it comes out. And it came out looking pretty good. So I'm going to take some silver acrylic. Again, this is just cheap stuff from Home Bargains. And I'm going to use a nice soft brush and I'm going to use that to just go over the whole thing. I've then mixed it with a bit of black to make it a little bit darker, but I'm still not keen on the brush strokes. So we're going to use a sponge and just wipe over the whole thing with that. And I'm quite happy with the way it looks, to be honest. That will do nicely. So now for the center circle, I've used some of this sort of thin clear plastic that you get on some packaging and I've just cut it up into strips to put over each of the little channels that the lights are going to go into. And I'm going to use some white and some blue. The white is a Winsor & Newton, which is quite a good make. That's from the range. And the blue I'm using is, again, just Home Bargains paint. So I'm putting white into the channels first, and then I'm going over it with the blue, and then just going through the very center with some white again. So it kind of looks like it's um, like a glowy sort of effect. That's the effect I'm going for anyway. So that's how that turned out. If we put it in the middle where it fits, and we turn the lights on, Yay! We have light! So now this was a bad idea, okay? And I didn't think about it until after the fact, but I've used some super glue to glue these down. And unfortunately, it leaves a bit of a haze on the clear plastic. You can't really notice it when the light's on, but I was a bit gutted about this. And we're just gonna add now some decorative bits to this section to make it look a bit more like it does on the Ragnarok map in game. And I'm gonna take some skewers and cut them up to the right size. Just gonna have to pick that up because I flinged that off into the middle of the room and the dog will try and eat it if I don't retrieve it straight away. And now we're gonna glue these on. I'm pleased with how they look. It's coming together a little bit now. I'm just gonna like put loads more glue on to make sure that they do stay in place. Then I'm gonna take a Stanley knife and just peel off the top layer so they're not so rounded. I'd like them to be a bit more squared off, you know, at the top. Now I'm just gonna glue in a couple of extra bits of detail that I've made from some thin strips of balsa wood. And now for the obelisk itself. So this was, uh, this was daunting for me. This was more daunting than the base bit. So I've got an old cereal box and I've just drawn a template of how I'd like it to look. And so I can use this to put on top of the foam. So I'm just gonna pin it in place. Then I can draw around it and we'll take a blade and cut this shape out. And I've also got to cut the details out for the diamond bits that go in the center at the top of the obelisk. And I'm just gonna add a little bit more detail to these with my hot wire cutter. Oh, I'm quite excited now. It feels like it's kind of getting somewhere. A couple of holes in here so that we can fit some lights through these as well. Right, so I've cut out all my pieces and now I've got to assemble them all. So this is how this one's come out and we're going to have to do that now another three times. And I will glue them all together with the old faithful PVA glue. Now I've got to add a couple of extra details that are on the obelisk. So I'm going to use a pencil first just to sketch out where I want them. And then I'm going to use a blade just to make the lines initially. And then I'm gonna use the pencil again to widen the gaps just so you can actually make them a bit more visible. There we go. Okay, now I needed to assemble the obelisk yet. Yeah, and this, oh my God, this took so long because it just kept falling everywhere. So I've had to make like a little scaffolding thing for it to fit in, like a little brace. So then I've painted the whole thing black with the Mod Podge and black paint mix. And I've added these little squares with circles in the middle because I'm going to have a perspex pipe going through it. So I've added those to the middle in three sections to hold the whole thing together because I didn't know how else I was going to do this. It was quite a tricky one to figure out. And then I did use super glue to glue it together, which isn't ideal because it does burn. You can see it's burnt through in a few places. So I'll need to get myself some foam safe super glue, I think. But it did stick it together and we can go and fill in those dodgy areas later on. So I just need to make a couple more little detailed bits that'll go on the top of the obelisk because it's four sides and the diamonds only are on two sides. So we're going to add these to the sides which don't have any. Okay, so we're going to put some lights into the diamonds now. And these are just those like corks with lights on and I'm just trying to like sort of manipulate the lights and the wires slightly just to get them how I want them. And then I'll glue these in place then with a hot glue gun. It's starting to look like an obelisk now. Right, so now I'm gonna take some foam clay and with the foam clay, I'm gonna roll it up into worms because inside the obelisk, 
there's like some like these twisty like tech tendril things i don't really know what to call them so we're gonna make some of those and then we're just gonna put them around inside of these little diamond ones we'll do the same later on then again with the actual obelisk itself this is how it looks once it's got everything together so I've cut these grooves into the squares that I had holding the whole thing together because I didn't like the corner sticking out. So I'm going to use some more foam clay and I'm just going to put that over the top of the edges of this and I'm going to smooth it out with some water just so we haven't got like the jagged edge of the foam on there. And then we're going to make some more wiggly worms and we're going to place them inside of the obelisk. We're going to go around the whole thing and put them everywhere. And now I'm just going to go around and chop and sand and fill all the areas that needed a bit of work just to make it all look a bit tidier. Now I'm going to sand and paint these little cork switches so that we can glue them to the back of the diamonds. There we go. Makes it a bit more hidden, doesn't it? And I was thinking of how I could actually attach these to the obelisk because I want them to be removable so that you can switch them on and off. So I'm going to use these like earring backs that I've got from like a jewellery making set. I'm just going to cut them up until they're sort of the right size. Mark out where I need everything to go. And then I've got like some chainmail links, which I've just bent into shape. And I'm going to pop them into the foam. Glue them in place. I can now just hang them off there and they should fit pretty good. And they do! So now I want to paint the obelisk and I did sketch out some lines on this with like a paint pen but I didn't like them so I'm going to go over the whole thing with a silver paint first. It looked quite translucent and I wasn't overly keen so I'm going to do the whole thing in grey. And then I'm going to take my white paint and quite a brittle brush and then I'm going to just paint on some lines where I want them to be to give it the kind of effect that you see on the obelisk. Now I'm going to go over the whole thing with the silver because it was quite transparent earlier so I thought that might look quite nice and I was quite happy with how it did look. Now I'm going to take some black on a thin brush and just go through all of the indented areas with the detail just to make them stand out again. So now we're going to use the same technique on the little diamonds. Then I'm going to do a little bit of painting on the wiggly worm bits on the inside of the obelisk. I'll come back to those a bit later. Now for the shading, so you can see I'm just adding some black to the areas I want shaded and I'm going to use a sponge to kind of blend it out into the silver. This was some of my favourite painting to do, I did enjoy doing this. I'm putting more black in all of the grooves and stuff so they look more shaded. And now we're going to add some highlights. So I'm going to take a sponge with some white paint, I'm going to dab it and blend it into the areas that I want to look highlighted. I'm going to do it all around the edges as well and the outsides where like the sun would be hitting. This is the side without shading and this is the side after shading and I think it looks a lot better. You can still see some of those like helixy lines that are underneath as well. Now onto the wiggly worms we're going to add some purples, some blues, some darker blues and then I'm adding a black wash into the indented areas just to bring out the shade in there a bit. So a black wash is basically I've mixed acrylic paint with a load of water and I'm going to use a sponge to add a bit more colour. Again with different shades of blue, just dabbing them on until I want it to look a little bit glowy again. I've then gone over all the black bits inside there so that they stand out because I had smeared some paint on there when I was doing the wiggly worms and this is how it looks once it's finished. Now we've got to find a way to attach it to the base. So I've got this Perspex tube, which fits nicely into the middle of our diorama. And I just slot the obelisk over the top. Oh, oh. <laughs> slot the obelisk over the top. And it's looking pretty good, but it's a bit wonky. So we're going to have to figure out a way to keep it upright and centered. Oh, <laughs> there it goes again. I need to mark off how high I want it as well, because I'm going to have to cut this tube. So I'm going to do that with a hacksaw. And now I'm going to use some foam clay and I'm going to pop that inside the centre circle that I've made so that we can try and get this Perspex tube standing upright and not sort of leaning to one side and toppling over. We don't want the Leaning Tower of Obelisk. So I'm just going to fiddle about with this until I get it right. Just keep adding more foam clay until I think it's about right. Hey! Not too bad. 
Okay, now we get to use the mesh that we made earlier and we can put that on the center of the obelisk. There's gonna be a lot of chopping and cutting before we can arrange them all where we need them to be. There we go. I'm now gonna mask out the perspex that I've got in here with some really thin masking tape because I don't want sand getting in here when it comes to doing the sand pour. So we just don't want anything getting in these areas. So there we go, it's all masked out. I'm just gonna cut off the end bit of the masking tape. And I think we're pretty much ready to go now. So I'm gonna paint these black now, just primer them up. And I'm using a silver here. And I wasn't keen on the silver I've been using so far. It just didn't stand out at all. So I'm gonna use this war paint, shining silver. So this is stuff specifically made for miniature models. And look at the difference. I know it looks a bit white in the footage here, but in the final shots, you'll see it is actually silver and it looks amazing. I'm so much happier with this. It does pay to buy good paints sometimes. <laughs> oh, I've got a washer as well. So I want to use this for the middle of the diorama where the tube is going to go through at the base. So I'm going to primer that in black and then we're going to paint over it with silver using the same shining silver as we used a minute ago. I've now got to cut up all of these little mesh sections so that they've got a gap in between them and then glue them in place. Now it's time to paint the whole diorama in brown. Put on some PVA glue and do the sand pour. I've been so looking forward to this. I really have because I feel like it just transforms the whole thing. Look at this. I'm going to just spray it with some isopropyl alcohol now and then I'm going to go back in with some watered down PVA glue just to help all the glue spread and settle and now I just need to wait for it to dry. So now that we've got all the sand on, we can finally get onto some dry brushing and I love dry brushing so much. So you want to put a tiniest amount of paint on your brush so you wipe most of it off basically. And I'm just using a grey here and I'm just gently brushing over the raised edges of the stones with the grey. And you can see it makes it pop quite nicely. So on the stones around the bottom of the larger standing stones and the ones that are scattered around, I've used more of a kind of tan paint to dry brush over them. And then I'm coming in with a makeup brush and a lighter grey and I'm going to go over the whole lot with this. So everything, all the stones are going to get the same treatment here. Now I'm going to come in with a sponge with a pretty much white colour and I'm going to dab that on the raised edges. So it highlights the area where the sun would be hitting and it just makes it pop that bit more. Like I said, dry brushing is one of my favourite things to do. And this is how they look once they're all done. So now we've got to make some of the foliage that's dotted around on the Ragnarok Blue Obelisk. So what I've done, I've cut some skewers into smaller sticks. And now I'm going to just take a strip of masking tape and wrap that all the way around the stick. And you can see it gives it a bit of a nice texture so it looks like the tree trunks of the palm trees. And now we're going to take some brown string, which is just like packaging string. And I'm going to tear it apart a bit. And then use some hot glue to stick it to the top of our tree trunk. And then I'm going to use some hot glue again and stick them all down to this piece of wood. So I can paint them all. So I'm going to use a brown first, quite a dark brown and then take a dark green and paint the string. Ta-da! Now I'm gonna use a knife to cut these off the wooden base. And we can now glue on some of these leaves. Now these leaves are just from an old fake plant that I had. And I thought they looked quite good, that they'd come in quite handy for this. I have sort of snipped them along the edges so that they've got a similar texture to what palm tree leaves have. And hopefully that will show up once they're painted. So now I've got to paint them all with a black gesso as a primer. Okay, and now we've got to make the smaller shrubs. Done the same thing with them. So I'm going to use some PVA glue and glue them down to some baking paper and then sprinkle some sand over the top. And I've done the same with these separate stumps. So these are just random stumps that don't have any leaves on them. I'll be honest, I did end up going back, taking these out and doing them with hot glue because I got sick of these stumps tipping over all the time. It was doing my head in. Right, these are dry so we can paint them now. And we're going to go over with a sponge with a nice bright green and just dab it all around. And then we're going to take some yellow 
And with this, we're just going to dab on the outer edges of each leaf. So it looks like it's kind of been sun dried a little bit. And then we're going to take a small amount of brown, like an orangey brown, and we're just going to pick out certain sections and just dab a little bit of paint on there. So again, it looks a bit more sun dried. So you'll also notice that there's a lot of pebbles knocking about on the beach area around the obelisk. So we're going to make some of these pebbles out of foam clay. And then I'm just going to dab on some tan paint to them. Followed by some grey. And then I'm going to put on a lighter tan. And just dab it all over them and then go in with an almost white paint and just lightly dust over the top of them with this. And here's how they look once they're painted. Okay, now this bit was tricky. So each of them little sections of the meshed bit that go around the middle is going to have to be lined with some wire. So I'm going to have to bend this wire into shape. This is just some crafting wire that I picked up from the range. And I'm going to have to bend each one of these into the right shape and place them around. I'm going to glue them in with super glue and my fingers looked an absolute mess after doing this. But it was worth it. So now we need to paint around every edge of the whole diorama with like ocean colours. So I'm going to start with a dark blue in the corners and then work my way in with lighter blues, getting lighter and lighter and then having like a sea green kind of blue on the inside and then trying to blend them all in. And I'm going to do the same to this top end here where there's kind of like a pool, like a little puddle. And this is how it looks once it's done. It's going to look a little weird until we pour on the resin. Now, this is my first resin pour. So this is just a two part epoxy resin that I got from eBay. And I'm going to pop in a drop of blue epoxy colorant. Give it a good mix for a few minutes. I have put duct tape with some foam around the outsides and I'm just hoping it doesn't leak. Like I said, this is my first time with this. So you'll have noticed I'm using a wooden fork to pour it onto before it goes into the diorama. And this is to minimize the amount of bubbles that you might get in the resin. And I'm going to use the wooden fork to spread the resin out into any areas that I want it to be. And any bubbles that do show up afterwards, I'm going to go with a lighter and just pop them with that. I had to do this a few times because they did come back now and again. Right, and now it's time to place our pebbles when we need them to be. So I'm just going to glue them on with a bit of tacky glue. And here's how it looks when they're all glued on and the resins dry. All right, so it's now time to start putting our foliage onto the diorama. I'm excited about this because it's really starting to come together now. So we're just going to pop them in some PVA glue and then stick them down. And then it's time for the trees. So I'm using a pin vise to make the holes where I want them and then pop in the trees in there. I've tried to go as accurate as possible with the placement of like the pebbles, the foliage, the trees to the source material because I love this game and I really wanted to do it some justice. And then we're going to need a little bit of detritus just knocking about. There is some bits of sticks and twine and stuff just knocking about on the beach. So we're going to put some of those on. And here's how it looks with them all on there. So there's something that you might notice was missing and that is there's a few little boxes just on the back right end sort of scattered around near the water and in the water a bit so I've taken a foam block which I've cut out and I've just scored some lines in it with a blade and then I'm going over with a toothpick just to widen the gaps a little bit and then taking a wire brush to score it and you can see it kind of gives it a bit of an effect which hopefully will look like wood once it's painted but now we've got to line all the corners with wood so we're going to use some really thin strips of balsa wood and some super glue so first we're going to like wrap this around balsa wood's very soft so you can kind of bend it and then use a knife to cut off the extra bits. And you can see my fingers are a mess already. We just fill in all the gaps. And this is what they look like once they're done. So they just need to be painted up now. So I'm going to give them all a coat of black as a primer. And then we're going to dab on some dark brown paint. This is just burnt umber. And then we're going to go over with a slightly more orangey brown. And this we're just going to dab on with a sponge. Well, they're using a sponge for all of this. And then a yellow. And this looks a bit garish. And it looks like, oh my god, what have you done there? But once it's dry, you'll see it actually doesn't dry so crazy. Look, see. See, you can see the difference between the one on the left that has got the yellow one compared to the one on the right. 
Now, once we fix them in place on the diorama, we're going to have to add some waves to the water. So we're using Gloss Mod Podge for this, and we're just going to use a paintbrush to sort of give the effect of waves. And then we're going to put a bit extra at the bottom of the boxes that are in the water. And this will dry clear, so it'll look hopefully like rippling water. And we're going to have to go around the whole diorama putting this on. So all around the side. I'm actually going to go over the edge bits as well, because... I tried to sand them down on, on one small bit and when I sanded it down it went quite hazy even though I went with a really fine grit afterwards so I wasn't overly keen so we're going to use this technique of using the Mod Podge to make like waves and we're going to put that on the sides as well as on the top okay now it's dry you can see it's got more of a water effect to it it looks quite nice and wavy so I'm quite happy with how it's come out. Like I said, this is my first time doing anything like this with the water. And with it being an arc build and Ragnarok Obelisk, obviously I really wanted to go all out on this one. So what is the one thing you always find on an obelisk when you get there? It's always a baggie. There is always a baggie there. And the Dying Lord suggested that I make one. So I'm going to have a go out of clay. And I don't really make much out of clay. I've made a couple of little things like little wizards, quite simple things, but nothing quite this small. This is smaller than my thumbnail. So this was a bit tricky, but I think it turned out okay in the end. And uh, we'll see what it looks like once it's painted. And now I want to fill in the gap on the battery end of the diorama because it looks a hell of a mess. So I've cut up some foam. I'm just going to glue it into place in here. And I'm going to fill out the rest of the area with some more foam and some plaster and PVA glue mix. And I've spread it over there. And once it's dry, I'm going to paint it black. And then I've covered it in sand afterwards as well. So now I've made a plaque out of coffee stirrers. And I've just tried to score them with a wire brush. But it didn't give the effect I wanted. So I'm going to just score some lines into it with a blade. And then we're going to paint it all with a watered down mixture of brown. And then just wipe the excess paint off. And you can see it's turned out quite nice because the paint has gone into the grooves, so it looks quite cool. So I'm happy with that. Now I've just got to get my stamp kit and stamp a game changer onto this. Let's see how that went. So this will be the first attempt. I'll stamp it on. Ta-da! <laughs> I got the E the wrong way round, so I'm going to have to sand this all down, paint it again, and try again. So here we go. Stamp looks pretty good to me. Pop it in the ink. Down we go again. And I've left this in so you can hear my disappointment. <laughs> so third time lucky let's go again make sure everything is in the right place and finally <laughs> it worked i do not want to be sanding and painting that thing again so i've made like a little bracket for it to fit in and i've made that out of skewers and coffee stirrers and then i've done the same thing as what i did with the plaque itself i've painted it uh, rubbed off most of the paint but then i have gone around the edges with like a darker brown and a bit of black just around the edges so it looks a little bit more rustic you know and uh, now we're going to glue it over the battery because this is where i want it to go i wanted a plaque on it but i also wanted it to cover the battery and be removable so that was the idea with that so now obviously we're going to need the center console that you access to travel servers and do the boss so i'm going to use coffee sticks for this as well and cut them into shape so that we can get that nice diamond shape. I'm just using super glue and a bit of accelerant to glue them together here. Then sand it down so it's the right size to fit through our Perspex tube. And we're good. So as usual, we're going to use the Mod Podge and Black Paint Primer on this. And then a silver. We're going to go all around the top and the edges with a bright blue. And I've added a bit of white to the centre bit as well, just so it makes it look a bit more glowing. Okay, it's time to attach the center console to the lights that are coming from one of the diamonds on the obelisk. So I'm using hot glue to glue that down. And now we've got to thread it through from the top right down. And hopefully it's heavy enough that it will pull it all the way to the base. And it does. Now the last thing we need to put in place is our baggie, which I think turned out quite nice. So I'm going to pop that in place with some PVA glue just next to the center console. And there's only one thing left for it. And that is to turn the lights on and roll the glamour shots.